All right, check out what I found on Microsoft Flight Simulator. I mean, there's no way this is a real airport, right? I mean, take a, this is in no way real. It's built on water. It's like Jesus Airport. But everybody, it turned out it was real. It is a real airport. It doesn't exist in real life. I mean, a lot of you guys requested that I make a video about Micronesian islands and their interesting airports. See, Micronesia has lots of little island atolls where it's really, really hard to build airports. And it shows. I mean, take a look at this atoll right here, which is called Pingalap. Everybody, let's talk about airport runways that desperately need renovating because this is an active airport. But it, it doesn't quite seem like one. Take a look at this, everybody. Um, as you can see, this was quite nice. Yes, Microsoft reworked these Micronesian airports a year ago for the Flight Sim Update 13, you know, the world update. And it does look pretty cool, although this runway, once again, as noted here on the website of the Micronesian government, is in fair condition, but deteriorated paving in some places eroded fringe. Um, this runway is 1,200 feet long, and it's really hard to find a plane that actually can fly here. Take a look at this. We we can maybe take off in this caravan. Yes, yes. We've got the huge terminal building right here and this airport that hangs into the lagoon of the interesting Pingalab Island. I mean, I wouldn't quite call this an airport, but yes. Guess by whom it was built? Of course, it was the United States in the 1960s and 70s and 80s. They came here for war and democratization, you know, kind of daily American things anyway. It was obviously strategically useful to have a runway like this on an atoll like this. And so they built it here. It took like five years. And since the construction was completed in 1983, it appears as though there hasn't been a lot of improvements made to it. Apparently, you can fly here with an airline called Caroline Island Air Services. I mean, they do have a Wikipedia page, um, but it doesn't show up here. Apparently, two to three planes per day fly to and from the atoll operated by this airline. And you know, I would like to book a flight to this interesting island, but um, they don't have a website. Um, in fact, the only website that's noted here is Facebook. And the only way you can book is through phone or via email. And we have this uh, school ass timetable here. By the way, they also fly to Yap International Airport, the best airport in the world. Take a look at that code. Now, back in the 80s, the United States Air Force apparently used DHC 7 Caribous to land here, which is probably the biggest plane that I could ever imagine that could in any way operate here. I mean, even the Twin Otter will kind of struggle here. This is an 1100 foot long runway. At least the water is soft. All right, there we go. All right, we are late. We are very late. Let's stop. Okay, let's do it. All right, never mind. Actually, the DHC-6 Twin Otter doesn't struggle here at all. Hmm, we might be able to find some bigger planes that could land here. I mean, the broken asphalt slash gravel runway will surely help. All right, come on. This is time, my friend. The DC-6, um, it's a propeller-driven airplane, and it can fly at very low speeds, and it can land at relatively short runways. Come on, this plane has never let us down. All right. Plan hard. Come on, you can do it. Let's stop quickly. Come on, you can do it. You are a DC-6. All right, that hasn't worked. Reverse thrust doesn't work. Ah! All right, never mind. Let's try it again. All right, come on. You are a DC-6. You should be able to handle this, right? Come on, yes, and he is able to handle this. Perfect! I like to see this. Very nice. Everybody, I'm delighted to say that we could theoretically transport pretty much a quarter of the population of 250 using the DC-6 from this airport. I think at that point, it would make more sense to just use a ship. But yes, 250 people live here on the island. If you were to fly airplanes here, I think this will be quite good because because you wouldn't have to paint your airplane in a special livery. Because it turns out most of the people that live here are colorblind. This is why the Pingalap Island is often called the colorblind island. Because of a genetic mutation from quite a while ago, lots of people here are colorblind. But there we go, this worked very, very well. Now we haven't talked yet about this airport here, which just has a code and has a runway that's just as short as the Pingalap runway. Everybody, welcome to the island of uh, Sapfuafik. Great. This runway was actually built into the water, probably also by the Americans, on top of a reef. And as you can see, it still holds up today. Back when the airport was built, it was actually, at least one side was on the island, but due to erosion, the status quo is that this runway is actually completely separated from the island by 20 meters. 
And yes, you'd have to take a little boat in order to get on the actual island itself. Uh, uh, seems like a logistic dream to me. And we can also, of course, take off. This is the DC-6. We've already tried, you know, running this airplane on a runway like this. Absolutely no problem at all. Come, come on. Absolutely no problem at all. We're just going to ignore that. Now, this island does have 600 people that live on it. We won't be able to find an airliner that would fit all of those. In fact, I, I, um, this is a 737-600. There's no way we're going to be able to land this on like a, what is it? This 350 meter long runway. Like that's just incredible. Yes, it is true. This island is just waiting for an overrun to happen. Let's see. You're doing great. You're doing great. All right, there we go. I mean, that's the way to stop. Look at that facility here. It's canoes. It's a normal sounds. That was great. I had to use outside view. I have no idea what a miracle this was, but I've been able to land a 737 here. <gasps> Holy moly. Say so put a lot of effort into landing an outside view just to make sure to not crash into the water. I mean, the airplane can fly at 100 knots and we were able to stop uh, this work. And I think it should be quite obvious that anything bigger is not going to work. This is a 767. Like, there's just no way this is going to be working, right? Come on. You will be able to do this, right? You will. This will happen. You won't, right? All right. Hasn't worked. But when it turns out the 737-600 is quite capable, let me try landing it here on the other island here. I mean, it's pretty insane. We're flying this plane at 80, what, 89 knots here. At full flaps and low weight, this is absolutely perfect. Let's maybe see. Let's get a perfect touchdown and do a perfect stop now. Come on, you can do it. 737. Now touch Come on. Yes. There you go. All right, firm landing. But oh, there. Oh, yes. Yes! Is this realistic? I'm not quite sure. I mean, it's PMDG. We've stopped, and that was like a 50 meter stopping distance. That's absolutely insane. You know what? I, I do wonder, though. Are we able to take off as well? Come on, let's do a very static takeoff. Go full power in the engines and also putting out flaps. Come on, let's release the brakes now. Perfect. As you can see, the flaps are coming out perfectly. Yes, you can do it. Six knots, 70 knots, 80 knots. Yes, come on. Yeah. There's no way this is realistic. Everybody, we can... Uh, practically, island off the 737-600. I'm amazed. I mean, this is nicely at sea level. Not bad of density. Perfect one. So, everybody, this is... Um, this video um, practically has no use. Perhaps someday we should go to the Micronesia Islands and check them out. So everything, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.